Big Sam. What does Dutch know about Bob Roop and company trying to kill Southeastern in Knoxville, owned by Ron Fuller in 1979? Bob Roop claimed Fuller was skimming off the house. Kevin Sullivan and Bob Armstrong said Fuller paid well and Roop was trying to steal the promotion. Your view. Thanks. Well, I've heard all kind of all kind of stories about that. But yes, they did have almost a talent uprising in Knoxville uh, about the way they were being paid. And they were being paid well because he kept a small crew. He only kept like 14 guys. And they didn't run big towns. They didn't run Atlanta. They didn't run – the biggest town they ran was Knoxville. And that was that was the biggest. So I don't know – what they were talking about because they said he was stealing money. But to me, I always made funny. Um, I always made money with, with Ron Fuller. And if they thinking about money being stolen, go to those bigger territories. Go to, let's say, go to mid Atlantic. And you know how the promoters steal money? They just don't tell talent what the house is. So you go out there and one house say it's just off the one house is ten thousand dollars. That's for cheap tickets. So you see the house for ten thousand dollars and you come back and the house is visibly up. More people in there, and you say, Wow. Then you get your payoff for it, and it's the same as the ten thousand dollar house. So you question the promoter. I thought that house was up. No, no, it was the same. There were more people in there. Oh, a lot of free tickets. We give out a lot of free tickets. Oh, really? And the reason the promoter could get by with that, nobody ever saw the actual numbers for the count because the promoter got first count. And I've heard of promoters going in there and he said, oh, is, is that it? Yeah. He just reached and get a handful of money and put it in his pocket. Now count that. That's what they do. I've heard that, but and I, I have no reason to doubt it. But I think, yeah, uh, Bob Roop was trying to get a coalition, I guess, and some other people to follow him. And they were going to start a different company in Knoxville and run what they call opposition. Now it's competition. They run opposition to, uh, to, to, to Ron Fuller, which in turn caused Ron just to, I think he may have sold it to somebody. Then it went out of business. But when he saw that, he said it's more trouble than it's worth because it had some bad publicity. So he just he shut it down. Is this the incident where he and Ron Garvin and a few others do that expose in VHS interview and then threaten to show it? They it, And you can still watch that too. Isn't that still on YouTube? Yeah, I think it came out a few years ago. Uh, did, that was it. Yeah, did, did the news make the rounds throughout the wrestling business that this video was going, or whatever it was, beta max, who was going around? Well, it made the news. What are you going to do? Nothing. I mean, that was nothing new anyway. To me, I, I always said, what else is new? I don't think the fans are not so stupid that they don't know that this is manipulated in some way. But you got to manipulate it in a way that kind of, kind of sparks their interest more. So I know we've had that all the way through. People breaking kayfabe and doing this and doing that. And hey, we tried for fifty years to kill the bins. We couldn't do it in fifty years. <clears throat> it's still not dead today. So I think it may have helped it somewhat. I hate to say that, but it did. This wasn't written down, but I was going to say, was it Jack Pfeffer, Pfeffer came out in the 30s with an expose in whatever New, New York newspaper? I think tickets went up uh, after that happened. Well, Eddie Mansfield. I heard that, and I don't think it made a difference with Mansfield. It made uh, some Sunday evening talk show. I forgot, 60 Minutes or something <clears throat> made that. But Jack Pfeffer was, he, yeah, it was Jack Pfeffer was like a, a carnival guy anyway. And if it, and people got their news in different forms back in those days. So, but in the thirties, wrestling was, was kind of warm, but just in the big cities though, the territories, I don't know when the territory started, but I think in the late forties, 
early 50s, that's when the territories started to be, <clears throat> started to coming into their own. 